than a microphone. It's the best one. WTF. <laughs> Would you use this microphone? It smells not like a bus stop. Yeah. <laughs> so is this the warm-up interview? Let's That's why this. I put you at the 11 o'clock hour. Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Are you ready? We're yes, ready. ready. Adrian. So, Larry, talk to us a little bit about how the business has changed since way back when you got into it. Way back, way back in 1999 when I got into this, when I invented the industry of pro audio in 1999. <laughs> I'm probably not the right person to ask that question because uh, I did an interview with Front of House Magazine about 17 or 18 years ago, and the guy actually asked me if I was going to gravitate towards uh, digital consoles. And I said, oh, no, no, that doesn't fit my business model. And then, literally, before the issue came out, I had purchased my first four digital consoles. So I'm probably the wrong person to ask about that. Um, Fake news. Uh, you know, what I've, what I've noticed uh, mostly is the quality of, of PA systems have, has, has improved a thousand percent over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, even the crappy name brands have decent stuff. They don't mean to, they just do. You know, so there you go. That's not the answer you're looking for? That's all I got, That's baby. No right Larry, you are the proud owner of the largest view inventory. Is that true? It is true. Sure. Almost. Yeah. Almost, okay. No. But you were an early adopter, I no doubt about true. it. Yeah. And um, I'm curious, why did you put all your chips on view? You know what? It wasn't really, okay, we, we did a couple of shootouts, and you won the shootouts whether we liked it or we didn't like it, and we had a lot of big name brands out there, And but it wasn't really about that. What it was about for me was uh, Jim Sides and Ken Berger um, were accessible, and uh, that, was a, that was a big deal for me, being able to communicate with those guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Before I even purchased the system, that was a big deal for me. Um, uh, since then, uh, I've got everybody in this booth on speed dial. I can talk to you anytime I want to. I can talk to Sarah anytime I want to. I've talked to Sarah while I was sitting on the crapper. This is a true story. So, so, so you know, uh, the, the, what's, what's important to me is, is the service and the personal connection. Um, the, the benefit, on the side benefit is that they don't make a PA that sucks. You know, so, so that's a side benefit. But being able to, to get on the phone with Mike Adams and discuss, you know, uh, DSP and maybe see a change, you know, in the system, that's that's a big deal for me, you know, and I appreciate that. Not the answer you're looking for? That's all, that's all you're gonna get. You got that cheat sheet on. Just page down. Oh, the, the HAS. H HAS has ran for four years in a row, the Las Vegas Blues Bend. And it did with an all view system. How does your view inventory and the support you receive from view enable you to pull off this four, five stage festival? Well, um, first off, the Blues Bender uh, promoter has now added a new bender. I don't know if I told you about that yet or not. No. In April, it's a jam band crap thing, stuff, you know, fish or something. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. But they've they've added this uh, a second bender, um, and the promoter. For the both vendors is actually my first customer ever from 1998. We've been friends for a long time. Uh, he's actually become a very big View fan. In the last couple of years, uh, Ken Berger, who's a blues fan, shows up, and, and AJ Gross, who's the promoter for that event, looks forward to seeing Ken. You know, is, Ken? Is, is Ken, Ken yeah, is Ken coming coming this year? Uh, I don't think so, but I'll call him. <laughs> so. Well, I'm glad to see that. Yeah. that Ken's presence. Uh, well, just, that's a little weird all by itself, isn't it? It is. It is. Uh, and as you were saying earlier, the, the ability for you to have access, the accessibility to whether it be Mike Adams or Ken Berger, and I think we had a client in here yesterday uh, that also spoke to that accessibility. And have, you, you wanted to send them everywhere and have them Go ask for the do you want CEO. me to talk about I that? I do want you to talk uh, about that. Uh, yesterday, a customer came into the booth and assumed that I worked here since so I was hanging out. Uh, getting ready to buy a, a very large rig, it looks like. Um, and Ken Berger did sit down and have a conversation with us, and I suggested to the customer that he go to 
L Acoustics or DFV's booth and asked to speak with the CEO of the company about his 24 box purchase. Um, you know, because yesterday he had the CEO of DU with him at the table right over here. So uh, I think that's a big deal, and I, I think that that accessibility is very important. Whether you own eight boxes or 800 boxes, I think that, that accessibility is very important um, uh, as a customer, as a guy that's right now to check for a PA system. Thank you. Adrian. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're here all week, really. It's, it's, it's Try the deal. Um, Larry, so talk one. to us a little bit about what you think are the biggest shifts facing the industry in the next five years. Headphones. What Everybody's going to learn? headphones. Everybody's going to be on headphones. There'll be no more loudspeakers. There'll be all headphones. Bluetooth headphones for 61,000 people. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I, 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 you know, I, I don't know what the shift's going to be. Every, every time I say what I think the shift's going to be, I'm wrong. So, uh, uh, what do you think it's going to be? Headphones. <laughs> no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't really. I, everything's getting smaller. You know, and, and I like the fact that PA systems are getting smaller and doing a lot more work. So, you know, maybe it is going to be headphones, Mike. I, you know, maybe, maybe that's the next thing you and I need to talk about is headphones. I don't know, man. No, that'd be truly personal. <laughs> View headphones. It could be a thing. It could be a thing. Maybe. You or me. It's all you. Oh, so now I'm going to go into storytelling. It's talk, talk, talk turkey. <laughs> now, Larry, one of the things, you, you were an early adopter for you. Your support has been um, on so many levels, supporting us on large-scale events, um, such as Bottle Rock, uh, such as Clear, uh, the Summerfest, uh, when the AL-12 came out. Uh, also making sure that you, can, you were over uh, having an opportunity to speak with Mike Adams about his thoughts because he, he had asked and requested uh, some of our key uh, clients, key people, to come and just discuss with him. So to make sure that he was on the right track, rigging hardware and stuff. Um, how, in the, over the course of this time, is that going to uh, change your your decisions on what you're going to be your new purchases are going to be. At this point, I don't see uh, HS Productions making a change from View Audio Technic in the next I'm ten years. That. No, I. It, there's no reason for it. First off, the product's amazing, and you know, being able to have an audience with with uh, the design, you know, on a, you know whenever I want, um, you, you know, to discuss potential changes or or, or things that would make life easier for the guys loading the trucks or rigging the, the PA or whatever. That's that such an important thing for me that I'm not going to get from anyone else because frank, frankly everyone else is just a little too arrogant for the input from a, from a sound company owner. They just are. You know, they'll take input from sound company owners that are on you know, big tours, but they're not going to take input from smaller sound companies like what I have. It's just not going to happen. So I appreciate that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, literally, with, with you. So. Well, I'm going to open it up to the floor. Because I know that um, Greg Kirkland has some questions for you, or a question for Bill you. Evans. <laughs> Greg. Larry. What's your favorite view product and why? Really? I have to pick one? Nice. The, the, HS, the HS221 is, that shit is awesome. That is that sub is ridiculous, ridiculous. What makes it ridiculous? If you're trying to get pregnant, it will not happen. Your man will go sterile standing in front of one of those subs. I'm telling you right now, that sub is crazy. There's not another sub on the market that is as crazy as that sub. There's a star. Next, thank you. Story, word prim. This was the uh, this was the audition for the Kemper Pomar tour. That was a rough day. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was just a really loud day. It was a really uh, loud day. So again, I uh, we had 14 days. A decision needed to be made. 
we had to get in, get a, all the boxes of AO12s all together so that we could audition, audition them for uh, the front of house engineer, the monitor engineer, and their management. I had to find a venue. I had to make sure that there was enough that was going to be able to do a true representation to make a decision. Who do I call? Larry Hall. Everybody needs a hobby. <laughs> Everybody needs a hobby. When we were at that venue and we got the system up and everybody was collected to make sure that this thing went off without a hitch and we're standing on the floor uh, from stage to back of the floor was how many feet? Uh, I think it's 160 feet. 160 feet, what, about 250 to... 260 to, to the nosebleed. Okay. So we're on a riser at the back of the floor. I have, we have water bottles. We're just waiting for and things to get queued up for the guys to start having fun, start to put some low ends, start running some stuff through the tops. And I look over and Larry and I are looking at our water bottles and what was going on? The full water bottles that hadn't even been opened yet were shaking across the table. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was awesome. That was a good story. Yeah. Bill Evans. I know that you had some things you wanted to say to Larry. Uh, I don't know if it's the same thing. Grim, the first speaker shootout. I know that going into it, every nobody thought that the small line array was going to be able to fill that arena. Uh, the AL4. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so we didn't. I didn't think nobody, so. Nobody so talked about how that whole thing went down because I was really impressed. So, so. We, we did a shootout for a couple of years at the arena where we had, um, I don't know, eight or ten manufacturers show up. Everybody did a single line, and you did a line of AL8s and a line of AL4s. And uh, a lot of the people that were guests at the shootout were amused by the by the AL4. Uh, you know, it was, I think it was at, I think it was the end of 16, but it still just looked like a poster stamp in this arena. And uh, uh, when when the when the we got to the AL4, and everybody kind of started giggling a little bit, and then when it came on, and at the back of the house, we had full range AL4 at 140, 150 feet. It was, it was kind of ridiculous, and I think that that probably uh, subconsciously sold me on the brand completely, because that was 16 double four boxes. You know, I, I initially, my, when I saw the AL4, I, I, because of my ignorance, I was like, why would you bother? You know, what's what's the point? And then when we heard it, I was like, oh, oh, I get it now. Yeah, I get it now. <laughs> what do you always say that is in that little AL4 box? What is it that you say is in that AL4 box? A bunch of transistor radio parts. <laughs> <laughs> As you also like to remind everyone, you do not bring a what to a gun show? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if you need a big PA, you should use one. <laughs> because I'm sure you've been abused on so many occasions when you've walked into events and could not believe. And I, and I think you mentioned this uh, yesterday. It's still just amazes you what people are using those boxes for. Again, small format box, large yeah. footprint. That that is like a uh, a workhorse, but it's more like a work ant, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are there any other questions for for Larry Hall before we let him loose? Oh come on. Are you oh. serious? Is there any way I can retroactively get in on that five hundred dollar bet? No. Okay. Sir, do you have a do you have a, a question for Larry Hall? I'm just gonna start pegging people. <laughs> no, that's okay. We're good. We're good. I'm going home now. We, we haven't we haven't uh, maxed our limit out yet. Yes, we have. I'm maxed out. <laughs> okay, Larry, I want to thank you so much for putting yourself in the hot seat. No worries. And coming and joining us today. And uh, well, I hope it was at least fun. It was. Okay. That's why I wanted you here. Thank you very much. All Thank right. you. Yay. Thanks.